Hello gamers! Today we're taking a closer look at NVIDIA's latest flagship gaming GPU, the GeForce RTX 5090. While I don't have the Founders Edition model, I do have the MSI GeForce RTX 5090 Supreme SOC or Super Overclocked Edition. It comes packaged in a large white box. Unfortunately, there are no extras like a mouse pad or stickers this time, which was a bit disappointing. Included in the box are a 12 volts high power adapter and a GPU stand. The adapter features a yellow tip design, making it easier for users to check whether the connector is properly seated. However, the adapter is stiff and resembles the older design, with the yellow tip being the only notable change. In comparison, the adapter included with NVIDIA's RTX 5090 Founders Edition card is softer, more flexible, and overall a better design. The box also contains a graphics card stand or support, which has a magnetic base. However, it feels plasticky and less premium compared to the all-metal stand MSI included with their previous Supreme cards. NVIDIA's latest RTX 50 series Blackwell GPUs introduce a host of new features, including DLSS 4 multi-frame generation, NVIDIA Reflex 2, RTX neural shaders, neural rendering, the new transformer model, and more. However, I won't focus on these features in this video, as there's a lot to unpack. I plan to cover them in a separate video, especially DLSS 4 multi-frame generation, and a comparison of the new transformer model versus the older convolutional neural networks. But to give you a quick summary, NVIDIA's RTX 5090 features 21,760 CUDA cores, representing an almost 39% increase compared to the RTX 4090's 16,384 CUDA cores. It also includes 3,352 AI TOPS 5th generation tensor cores for AI processing and 318 teraflops of 4th generation ray tracing cores. The GPU runs at a base clock speed of 2.01 GHz and a boost clock speed of 2.41 GHz. MSI's RTX 5090 Supreme offers a slight factory overclock with a boost clock speed of 2.57 GHz out of the box. That said, factory overclock settings feel more like a marketing strategy, as NVIDIA's boost technology ensures the GPU can achieve even higher clock speeds dynamically during operation. The RTX 5090 comes equipped with 32 GB of VRAM, a 33% increase compared to the RTX 4090. NVIDIA has also upgraded to the newer and faster GDDR7 memory, offering an effective memory speed of 28 gigabits per second and a memory bandwidth of 1792 gigabytes per second on a 512-bit interface. While NVIDIA's RTX 5090 Founders Edition is a sleek, professional-looking two-slot graphics card, MSI's Supreme model takes a completely different approach. MSI's RTX 5090 Supreme is massive and heavy. I already thought the RTX 4090 Supreme X was large, but the RTX 5090 Supreme is even bigger and heavier. It measures 359 millimeters in length, 150 millimeters in width, and 76 millimeters in height, weighing approximately 2.8 kilograms. Aesthetically, the MSI RTX 5090 Supreme retains the design language of its predecessors. It features an all-metal construction with minimal RGB lighting maintaining a professional and refined appearance. According to MSI, the design is inspired by diamond cut lines, showcasing precision crafted triangular facets and minimalist geometry. MSI highlights its use of brushed textures, beveled details, and advanced metal finishing techniques to convey a sense of craftsmanship and layered elegance. The MSI RTX 5090 Supreme uses the newer 12 volts 2x6 connector, which is backward compatible with the 12 volts high power connector. According to NVIDIA, this updated design addresses and eliminates the socket melting issues that plagued the RTX 4090's 12 volts high power connector. The card also features dual BIOS, allowing users to switch between silent mode and gaming mode. While I don't have an accurate sound meter, the graphics card runs remarkably quiet. Even under full load, it remains nearly inaudible. Silent mode uses a less aggressive fan curve compared to gaming mode making it ideal for those who prioritize noise reduction. The MSI RTX 5090. Supreme's backplate is made of metal, but it's highly prone to collecting fingerprints and oil stains. The textured surface makes cleaning these stains more challenging. Toward the rear end of the graphics card, you'll find ventilation holes designed for hot air to flow through. To summarize the design and aesthetics of the MSI GeForce RTX 5090 Supreme SOC, 
It's a stylish, refined, and elegant looking graphics card. Now let's see how it performs. I currently don't have access to games that support DLSS 4 multi-frame generation technology. According to NVIDIA, 75 games will support DLSS 4 starting next week. I tested the MSI RTX 5090 Supreme with an X870E carbon Wi-Fi motherboard, powered by an AMD Ryzen 9 9900X. The system also included a 64GB G-Skill Trident Z 5 Neo memory kit, running at 6,000 mega transfers per second with a CAS latency of 30 clocks. Here are the three DMARC synthetic benchmark results I got. In Firestrike Ultra and Time Spy Extreme, the RTX 5090 outperforms the RTX 4090 by approximately 34% and 37% respectively. However, the performance gap becomes even more noticeable in ray tracing enabled benchmarks. In Port Royal, the RTX 5090 is 46% faster, while in Steel Nomad and Speedway, it delivers an impressive 52% performance improvement over the RTX 4090. I tested Cyberpunk 2077 and The Witcher 3 using the current version of DLSS frame generation. The current DLSS frame generation operates in 2x mode, while the new DLSS 4 introduces 3x or even 4x mode, generating up to three times more AI-generated frames. While DLSS 4 doesn't increase the native frame rate, it significantly enhances the smoothness of the gaming experience, creating the impression of a higher frame rate. At 1440p, the RTX 5090 generally outperformed the RTX 4090 and the other cards in the chart. However, I noticed some disappointing 1% lows in certain cases. In some games, it was only marginally faster than the RTX 4090, and in others, its 1% lows were even slightly worse. I'm unsure whether this is due to a driver issue or game optimization. It seems the RTX 5090 is reaching a point where its performance is being bottlenecked by the CPU at lower resolutions. This is why flagship GPUs are typically not tested at 1080p, as the resolution or CPU bottleneck prevents them from fully utilizing their potential, leaving a lot of performance untapped. With the RTX 5090, it appears that 1440p has become the new 1080p for bottleneck concerns. At 4K, the RTX 5090 truly shines, significantly outpacing other GPUs in average FPS performance. Even its 1% lows are now consistently higher than those of the RTX 4090, although there are still a few game titles where the RTX 5090's 1% lows are only slightly better. Nonetheless, at a resolution of 3840 by 2160, the RTX 5090 firmly establishes itself as the fastest gaming GPU currently available on the market. On average, the RTX 5090 is only 14% faster than the RTX 4090 at 1440p resolution. It also outperforms the RTX 4080 Super by 28% and AMD's Radeon RX 7900 XTX by 31% at the same resolution. However, at 4K resolution, the RTX 5090 showcases its full potential, becoming 34% faster than the RTX 4090. Additionally, it is now 75% to 77% faster than the RTX 4080 Super and RX 7900 XTX, respectively. This significant performance boost occurs because at 4K, the system is no longer CPU bound or resolution restricted allowing the RTX 5090 to fully utilize its power. Speaking of power, at 1440p, the RTX 5090 drew an average of 428 watts, with an average GPU utilization of around 79%. However, at 4K resolution, where GPU utilization hovered between 95% and 100%, power consumption increased to an average of 558 watts. In extremely demanding games like Cyberpunk 2077, with all ray tracing effects enabled, power consumption peaked at an incredible 599 watts. Fortunately, I was using Seasonic's Prime TX 1600 power supply to handle the load. As for the MSI RTX 5090 Supreme temperature, its large and robust cooling solution truly delivered. The GPU's maximum temperature peaked at only 74 degrees Celsius, 
even while drawing close to 600 watts under full load. Throughout the tests, the average temperature remained steady at around 62 degrees Celsius, showcasing the effectiveness of its cooling design. If you are coming from an RTX 3090 or RTX 3090 Ti, the RTX 5090 might be a good investment. But if you already own an RTX 4090, I'd think twice. What do you think of NVIDIA's latest flagship graphics card? Is it worth it? Let me know in the comment below. Overall, NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 5090 is now the fastest gaming GPU on the market. While it delivers improved performance and introduces several new technologies, sadly, it comes with a higher price tag than its predecessor and consumes significantly more power. That said, if power consumption isn't a concern and you're ready to invest in a flagship GPU, the MSI GeForce RTX 5090 Suprem SoC stands out as an excellent choice. It features a premium design, outstanding build quality, and an aesthetically pleasing look. However, be prepared to spend over $2,000 for these high-end premium graphics cards. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. I'll be making more videos on the RTX 5090, including side-by-side -side comparisons with other GPUs. Stay tuned.